many, many young people are worried about their future, even the parents. Rightly so, as you see, global forces working against the interests of nations and there is an engineered coerced dispersion of nations where young people are made to leave their families and go into new countries where they are aliens and they have to start life from scratch. Even parents sacrifice their earnings, savings and careers in order to provide a future for their next generation, progeny, in other countries. This is an engineered process, this is a planned process to disrupt families, disrupt nations, so that nations become weaker. And the scriptures tells us there's a person who makes nations weak and who works against the Creator, the Father in Heaven, who made the nations. Now you might think languages are the problem, but there was a time when there was one language, the powerful Nephilim, the global elite of the time, this must have been about 2400 BC, they got together and the oligarchy began to rule the majority and said, build a tower that will reach to the heavens for the sake of our name and our power and our majesty. So when all were together, there were few who became very powerful and ruled the rest. So to prevent this happening, that God made the nations into classrooms, that in every classroom, with their own language, they look after their own people, rather than all the world's resources will go under the global Nephilim, the global Plutarchs, the oligarchs. So now what has happened is, the global Plutarchs are have planned in every nation to find uh, those who will play ball with them, give them power, give them wealth, the, the, those who may recruit from the nations in order to sell the nation's resources to the global elite and make vassal nations slaves in a pharaoh system. In a time like this, God has a promise in Psalm 1. He tells us, such is the counsel of those people, such is the way that is being planned, such are the seats of scoffers who don't recognize God's design of benevolence and they want to rule the world with force and Darwin's evolution fits the billet uh, so that this, there's a struggle for existence and the might are right and the fittest survive, that's how it's going. But the Lord has provided for us the word of the Lord. So he promises, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor see, stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in it doth he meditate day and night. So God's word becomes for us a stream of hope, stream of wisdom, stream of hope, stream of wisdom, stream of knowledge, stream of application. It begins to run through our life as we daily read God's word. And the promise is, we will become a tree that is planted by that river of living water that flows to us from God's throne, God's constitution. And each of us will be like a tree planted by this water and we will have fruit in every season, generation to generation, and our leaf will not wither. That's the promise we have. So let's work with God's word, get the knowledge and wisdom of God's word, practice God's constitution, delight in his law, and in it meditating day and night. And God's law, God's word becomes our practice, becomes our constitution. God becomes the head of state for the citizenship who acknowledge him as father. And he will look after his own. And we have an example of this in 1450 BC, when Pharaoh was nasty, God had a place called Goshen, just beside the river Nile, between the Red Sea and the River Nile, where God looked after his own with God provision, while Pharaoh was harassing them. So any time Pharaohs are rising globally or nationally to harass God's people, God takes good care of his own, and his own have to say the family prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, and give us this day our daily bread, and live by the practice of forgiving those who uh, come against them, 
That's the only condition in the Lord's prayer provision. That's the Lord's constitution. Second thing I want to get at is God's promise that he spoke to Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, what do you see? So when we are in prayer, God gives the God proposition as a hearing word or a seen word. So in the Old Testament, the settled word is memory and the illuminated word is dava. In the New Testament, the settled word in the Greek language is called logos and the daily receiving word, revealed word, the hearing word is called rhema. So when we receive that portion of God's word that we are reading, apply it to our daily life, it becomes the operative power in our life. The word of God that powerfully works in us. So God's promise, Ephesians 3.20, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than what we think or are. Sometimes we may not think well for ourselves. Our past misgivings, failures may speak against us in our own insight. But God works exceedingly and abundantly more than what we ask or what more than what we think for ourselves. God thinks his best. God's scope for us according to the power that's working inside us. What's the power working inside us? Power of his word and the presence of Christ in us. This works in us and God works into the outside circumstances to give us the best. So Jeremiah was asked, what do you see? Jeremiah said, I see the almond branch. So it was winter time and Jeremiah was seeing an almond branch, God promising that winter will turn into the hope of spring. During spring it's the almond tree that first blooms, buds and so out of a winter of discontentment, of uh, you know going down, Jeremiah was told, tell my people that you have a new hope, a good hope. So the application is when you read God's word, and the word is working in you, you will have a vision, you will have a hearing, you will have a seeing of God's word, and God says, I will perform this work for you, word for you, Jeremiah 1.12. What Jeremiah saw as God's word, God said, I will watch over my word to perform for you. My question for you is, what is the last word that you had from God? This is not about you going to a man of God and him laying hands on you and telling something. This is about you listening to your God and your God speaking to you from his written word. So 2 Timothy 3.16 says the word of God is given for our instruction and for our reproof and for our correction in righteousness. It's the inspired word of God. So every day you read God's word. That portion of God's word that he wants to do in your life, you will see. And God says, he is watching over, he is looking over the word that he is going to perform for you that day. So every day, look for God's word that he is going to perform for you because you read it, you believed it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. That's how we live one day at a time, sweet Jesus. You will never be disappointed and the external circumstances will not run over you because God is looking after his citizenry with his constitution and you have to only mind his constitution, write it daily down for you, write what you hear in a book and look out, go through it a couple of times a day and at the end of the day you will say all what God promised he has done for me. Anything left over, tomorrow he will do it for you. Sufficient is God's work for you for that day. God bless you. I'm Dr. Lyle Mendes. If you want any more clips, the word on recent spirituality or science, please send a WhatsApp to plus 94 74 And today at 4 p.m. I will have a broadcast on the digital problem while I'm lecturing to some medical students. So uh, keep expecting at 4 p.m a broadcast about the present uh, sad thing about these two kids uh, falling off and uh, the cons how, uh, how, how do you keep your brain screen balanced for your children. Uh, God bless you and I'm Dr. Lyle Mendes. You can download my 
App Golden Nuggets free of cost from Google or App Store. God bless you.